Hi, my name is Kenneth Park, and I'm an assistant professor of medicine and interventional gastroenterology and co-director of bariatric endoscopy at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. I'm here today with my interventional fellow, Dr. Daniel Liu, and on behalf of all the co-authors, I want to thank the editors of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy and the viewers of this channel for giving us the opportunity to further discuss our paper, Comparison of No Stent Fixation, Endoscopic Suturing, and Novel Over the Scope Clip for Stent Fixation in Preventing Migration of Fully Covered Self-Expanding Metal Stents. These days, uh, more and more interventional gastroenterology service is playing a key role in managing not only GI luminal obstructions, but also surgical complications, including anesthesis breakdown, leaks, and fistulas. And with that, placing a fully covered luminal stents have become so central in managing these problems. However, as we all know, stent migration with these fully covered metal stents is a big issue and hindrance to patient care. With different options of stent fixation available, we wanted to qualify the efficacy of different stent fixation methods, especially in light of the new dedicated over the scope clip for stent fixation. So Dr. Daniel Liu, could you please review and summarize our findings in this paper? Hi, thank you, Dr. Park. Our study included a total of 433 procedures that involved placing fully covered metal stents. 239 had no fixation, 140 had suturing, and 54 had over-the-scope clips, or OTSC for short. Overall migration rates that followed with no fixation was 62%, 57% with suturing, and 35% with OTSC, which was statistically significant. Time to stem migration was also the longest with OTSC at six weeks compared to 5.1 weeks with suturing and three weeks with no fixation. This figure breaks down stem migration for each week from stem placement. The blue bar represents no fixation, gray bar is suturing, and yellow bar is OTSC. At all time points, stent migration was significantly higher compared to no fixation to OTSC and suturing combined. Starting at three weeks and four weeks, stent migration was significantly higher with suturing compared to OTSC. A multivariate analysis, no fixation had nearly three times more likelihood of stent migration compared to OTSC, and suturing had 2.3 times more likelihood of stent migration as compared to OTSC. Other significant findings included higher stent migration in the colon and higher migration rates with stent diameter over 18 millimeters. Secondary outcomes included clinical success rate defined by resolution of underlying etiology with stent removal. OTSC compared to no fixation and OTSC compared to suturing had significantly higher clinical success rates, respectively. Median procedure time was significantly shorter with OTSC compared to suturing, but significantly longer compared to no fixation. Adverse events were lower with OTSC, but not statistically significant. Thanks, Daniel, for that wonderful summary of our paper. As you mentioned, the dedicated OTSC for stent fixation seems to work well. It's easy to use. And the assembly is similar to the variceal banding kit. And so even for uh, people who've never used this before, uh, with instructions, the um, assembly should be easy to follow. So we'll demonstrate here how to properly uh, place the stent fix device, uh, the clip, so that the, uh, the stent um, can be properly secured. So here, once you uh, loaded up the stent fix device at the tip of the, uh, the scope, um, you approach the proximal end of the stent. Um, here is the esophagus, um, and you want to align the, uh, the stent fix uh, cap, which is uh, more of a bit of an oval shape as demonstrated here and you want to capture uh, if you can divide the oval space at the tip of your scope and within the cap into thirds you want to have maybe two-thirds of the, the the space in the cap be occupied by the mucosa and then one-third by the um, the stent the, the proximal flanges the proximal end of the stent and once you feel like that's adequately placed, you uh, place a little bit of suction. Um, and when you see a red out, that's when you can uh, turn the wheel, turn the dial to deploy the clip. And when properly placed, you will see this sort of a bulge of a mucosa uh, and sort of surrounding tissue and the clip um, and also clip attached to the, uh, the proximal end, the proximal end of the, the stent that you're trying to fixate.
Um, and so in this video, we'll showcase a, a scenario where the stent fix deployment didn't go as planned and, um, and also show a way to fix it. And so here, um, the stent fix device is loaded properly as shown here. It's advanced to the proximal end of the, the stent. This is also in the esophagus. And um, now the stent was aligned and, you know, obviously a lot of the mucosa is, is being sucked in. But here, as you can see, you can't really see the, the stent that's being trying to be captured here. And you don't, you don't really quite understand or know how much of the stent is being suctioned in or which part of the stent that, for that matter. The clip is deployed and it looks like too much of the stent got captured under the stent fix, uh, meaning that when you when the suction was deployed, you know, not only this end, but the contralateral uh, end also got captured or sucked into the cap. And therefore, um, you know, obviously it looks like the stent's been sort of collapsed or um, closed off by the clip. So in this situation, uh, sometimes it's just a little tip of the stent that got uh, buried in this sort of the curvature, outer curvature of the, the stent fix. So you can actually try using a rat tooth forceps and try to see if you can untangle it, sort of untuck the, the other end of the stent away from the, the curvature of this, uh, the clip, which is being shown here. But it looks like even that after that's done, um, probably a little too much of the clip was captured. Um, so this part of the stent still being captured under this, the stent. So here we're using a loop cutting device. This is a loop cutter um, to see if we can cut one of the wires, um, one of the lattices of the stent to sort of release the, the captured end uh, of the stent without actually affecting the, um, the, the stent, stent fixation. Um, you can also use APC or provided remove device, the DC cutting device, uh, which is used to cut the, the actual clip. But you don't have to actually cut the clip. You can actually use that device to cut one of the lattices if the loop cutting device or um, if for that matter is not available or it, it doesn't work um, as well. Um, and so you can save yourself from having to sort of cut the clip off and uh, deploy another one. Now, in terms of safety of cutting one of the proximal wires to release the uh, the stent from the stent fix, I shouldn't really impact the overall structural quality of the stent or impact its function. Um, for example, it shouldn't really fracture the stent on try to removal, just the one wire in the proximal end, so it should be safe. Now, in terms of the proper removal of the uh, stent fix um, at the stent removal, a lot of times, um, you know, at five, six weeks, when you're bringing these patients back, a lot of times you will see that the stent fix device has actually come off the esophagus or wherever else you have secured it, um, just due to the, the nature of the stent uh, fix causing uh, tissue necrosis and, you know, coming essentially just coming off of the whatever the, the tissue you have secured it on. But in case you need to remove the stent earlier or if by chance, the stent fix device is uh, still attached to the mucosa or the, the wall of the lumen that you secured it on. You need this special device. And um, they provide this uh, device called Remove uh, Device, DC Cutting Device. And basically, it has three prongs, and um, you have to charge it for maybe five minutes prior to use. And the point is to aim uh, these three prongs um, of the attached uh, device and capture at least uh, two spots, uh, two prongs into the area where you want to cut. And you want to aim for these areas um, right here. It looks like a ribbon. And these are the sort of the weak spots in the clip. Um, it's designed to get caught uh, pretty easily. Um, and you can see at least two prongs of the three prong device has to make cut. And once it does, it'll make a beep and you press a pedal and with the electricity, it'll cut the, cut the metal. And you have to cut at least at two spots. So here you're cutting the other side, and again, cuts pretty quickly and pretty easily um, as long as you can get the two prongs um, to stay in the, uh, in, the, in the clip. So now here, you remove, make sure you know it does have sharp edges, so it, the, the device actually comes with a hood. Because um, if you try to remove the, 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 removed, um, the clip pieces, um, it might be not possible, but also you may cause an injury. As you can see here, trying to remove the clip without the attached uh, hood, you really can't because sometimes the UES is so tight and you may injure the, the upper esophageal sphincter. Um, and now once the, the removed clip is removed, um, you can obviously remove the stent, um, just cone it in and sort of the attached 
piece usually just comes out with the stent and so you don't really have to remove both of them at the same time. Now in terms of the cost effectiveness of this procedure technique, um, due to its one and done sort of clip per one clip per stent um, design, it's actually more cost effective to do this versus uh, placing multiple stitches and cinches uh, using endoscopic suturing for one stent. In terms of the future studies, a randomized prospective study should follow to confirm and verify our findings. So thank you again for uh, giving us this time to discuss our paper. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can leave it in the comment down below. And again, thank you very much. Bye-bye.